Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Federico Talks Watches. Since last time I got so many questions in the Q&A, I decided I had to answer a few more. Such as, is this tutor gonna be collectible in the future? And what are the real margins watch dealers have to make? Now this question pisses me off, not because I don't want to answer it, but because there's a lot of people who are just lying about it. And you know what? I'm going to give you the truth. All that and more in today's episode. Now, of course, before we get started, customary wristwatch check. I'm wearing my new travel watch. I picked it up a couple months ago. My Nomos GMT with the airport codes. Absolutely loving this thing. I'm not traveling today, but I just, you know, wanted to kind of take it out of the box and put it on. And also, guys, don't forget to check out Delray Watch. Apart from putting a bunch of watches on sale in the sales section right at the top if you want to discount the top of the website, we got some more very cool watches in stock, including this Panerai Sealand with the beautiful engraved cap. Very rare watch made specifically for Qatar. This version is very rarely seen, and this is the cheapest one to ever be offered for sale to the public. We also got a very nice condition vintage Zodiac Aerospace GMT. This has the GMT function, the original uh, bracelet, the original br uh, bezel without cracks, and it even comes with a box. What an absolute treasure. And the Corum Tybridge Tourbillon, a fully in-house unique tourbillon and one of the least expensive Swiss-made tourbillons on the market. This is not going to be for everyone, but wow, what an interesting and cool watch and an interesting movement that's built entirely in a straight line. All that and more at DelrayWatch.com, link in the description below. The best place for a watch geek to buy a watch. Anyway guys, these are some more of your questions. And as I say in the beginning of Q&A videos, these are asked on my Instagram account at Federico Talks Watches. A few times a month, you'll see a Q&A picture pop up. When that does pop up, feel free to ask a question. I take the picture down after I have enough questions that usually only takes five or 10 minutes. Do not DM me, I do not check them. And in no particular order, we start with Rio Akbar. I noticed for quite a while now that the Gentleman's Gazette has collaborated with Delray Watch. Gentleman's Gazette is another YouTube channel, by the way. Will we be expecting you to take part in their channel, uh, I'm a big fan and a longtime subscriber of Raphael and his co-hosts. I'll be excited if you will personally collaborate with them. I noticed you're a stylish man yourself. Thank you, Federico. Well, first of all, thank you for the wonderful comments. But yes, we will be collaborating soon. I'm not going to tell you exactly when, but I will be flying up to Minnesota. And I believe they will be visiting me in Miami to do some collaboration content for our channels. A different take on watches for my channel and fashion for their channels. So stay tuned if that's something you would enjoy. And by the way, uh, Rafael, great guy, Preston. But I've been talking a lot with Nathan who does the watches on their channel. Um, and he's, you know, they're just very easy to work with. So shout out to my boys of Gentleman's Gazette. Nushi says, hey, Fed, hope you're doing fine. Thank you. What are your thoughts on the old Tudor Oyster Day Chronos, Tiger and Company? Do you think they have potential to become collectible down the road? Absolutely. So these are great watches. Essentially, a Daytona. You know, they use the same crowns, sometimes the same pushers. Very similar case. They even have a Tudor Oyster bracelet. But they house a 7750 movement, the world's most durable uh, and common Swiss-made chronograph movement. So basically, you get a lot of features of the Daytona without the, the fancy movement. But yes, they've become extremely collectible. I remember these watches were two, two and a half thousand dollars. Now they can be just under 10 for the special dial variations or five to six, four to six for the others. That is more than doubled in price. And why is that? Well, it's Tudor, so Tudor's pretty collectible, the association with Rolex. And also how close of a sibling or cousin it is to the Daytona. Collectors know about this and it has made these watches in demand. And I do think they will get more collectible down the line. Will Schaub. Hey, Fed, sub date or no date if you had to choose? Well, I've owned a sub date um, 
Ooh, I forgot the name. Hulk. Excuse me. But if I had to go black, I'd go no date. I just love the dial. It's cleaner. It's more symmetrical. I don't really use dates anyway, and uh, it's less expensive as well. So a bunch of pluses for me with no negatives. I would go no date. Captain Tob, Zenith Elite Moon Phase, hit or miss? Absolutely a hit. Now, yes, Zenith are known for their chronographs, and this isn't a chrono, but still a hit. I love Moon Phases, a very poetic complication. It's still an in-house movement. They can be had for under $4,000 pre-owned, and Zenith has a lot of history. What's there not to love? Good proportions, good movement, good design, inexpensive price, brand with history, Zenith Elite Moon Phase, an absolute winner. Now the question a lot of you have been waiting for. Fed, uh, from Alex Chu. Fed, as a watch dealer, what kind of gross margins do you typically target when making an offer for a watch? Can you help me understand the cost structure of a watch deal? E.g., offer price, photography cost, insurance, inspection, thanks in advance. It would be my pleasure. It would be my pleasure to be one of the only people to answer this honestly. Uh, I'm not going to say any names. Whenever you see a video saying... You know, oh, I'm that sub, I only made 500 bucks. No watch dealer is in business who can make $500 on $10,000 and, and stay in business. Now, yes, have I made a very sh small amount of money on watches? Have I lost money on watches? Absolutely. But that's not the norm. No watch dealer buys a sub for $9,500 expecting it to sell for $10,000 will not even cover the costs. They're losing money. No what you know, when a watch dealer says to you, I'm only making a thousand bucks on this AP and you're spending twenty five thousand on this AP, he's lying to you on TikTok, YouTube, lies. There are a lot of honest people out there, but no one or you know, at least not that I've seen, not a lot of people are willing to share their margin. So let me explain it to you. So let's before I share the numbers. First thing, notice the, the gentleman is asking for gross margin, not net margin. So that is, what is the margin before costs, okay? Obviously, the net margin is going to be smaller. And also, this question depends on one thing massively. How in demand is the watch? Is it a Rolex sub that I'm going to be able to sell in two days? Or is it a lesser known brand like a Vincent Calabrese that I might be sitting on for six months? This massively changes the margin. Now I can tell you for the hottest watch in the world, my gross margin, and by the way, the hottest watch in the world is not even, a, I'm talking like something I know I can sell tomorrow. The gross margin needs to be minimum 15% and I hate doing it. For hot watches like subs and speedmasters, gross margin has to be closer to 18 to 20%. And for something I don't really want to stock because it's going to sit, it can be as high as 40 to 50% gross. I would say our average gross margin is about 25 to 27% selling retail. So for me to the customer. Now, if we we're doing a wholesale deal, the, the margin is much smaller because also I don't have to offer a warranty. I don't have to inspect the damn thing. They're paying for label and they're paying for insurance. Obviously, I can sell the watch cheaper because of that. However, that is wholesale, we're talking retail. So, why those gross margins? Well, I don't wanna, you know, I'm not saying cry me a river because honestly, I'm, I'm making a very decent amount of money, but you have to consider the costs. Already when a customer buys the watch, depending on their payment method, 3% to 7% off the top, okay? Three to 7% depending what type of credit card, what platform they bought it on. Then shipping. We don't ship U.S. Post. We ship UPS next day air fully insured to get the watch to us. And then once we sell, so two shippings, 50 bucks a pop at least. Then I have to, you know, pay the salaries of people to inspect them. Then there's photography and editing that could easily be over 100, 150 bucks a watch just for, for the photography. Um, the inspection, well, that's a salaried position, you know, our watchmaker makes close to 70,000 a year. And then insurance, rent and all that. No one is making 10% on a watch gross and surviving in business. Those are lies, pure lies. The hottest watch in the world is 15% minimum for me, unless I need the money and I'm taking a loss. And we try 
and not do anything under 30%. That's the truth. You guys think it's too high? I'm sorry. That's business. That's how it is. You think it's too low? Well, I doubt you'll think it's too low. But that is the truth. No watch dealer, I don't care what he sells, is only making 10% gross off of you. And I, you know, I'm saying this because I know a lot of people are going to be shocked. You know, Federico, how can you make 30? You know what? Markup on jewelry is 400% at retail. 400%. Watch dealers, you know, hottest watch in the world, 15-ish. Average margin, 25, just under 30. A piece nobody wants, 40, 50, 55, 60. You know, that's how it works because we have to sell watches to make money and there are costs. And I'm happy to share all this information for you 100% honestly. In fact, if I look at my gross margin for Delray watch for the month, gross margin, average gross margin, 28.62%. And guess what? I don't have a massive margin. Every other dealer is doing about the same. They're just not willing to share it to you because they're scared to tell you, you know, how much money they make because they don't want to scare you into thinking you're making too much money. Now, some people might use this information to negotiate. Hey, listen, go for it. But at the same time, if I'm not making the margin I feel I need to make, I just turn down the deal. It is what it is. But I felt this is information I should share with you because I answer things honestly. Anyway, enough of my rant saying how an honest you know it is what it is it's just i'm sorry i got a little annoyed because i'm sick and tired of watch dealers being like i make 500 it's just it's bullshit is what it is anyway guys thank you for your time please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it it really does help don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any more content and of course i'll catch you in the next one take care